What's going on guys? It's Matt Tebow here with Savant Marketing Agency. And in this video, we're going to talk about five steps that you can take to start attracting more uh, high-end jobs into your business now. The reason I'm making this video is that I've noticed a lot of contractors want to land bigger jobs, higher paying jobs. Um, you know, they want to the, they want to attract those like upper echelon type jobs. And I'm not sure that a lot of contractors actually know the steps that need to go into actually doing that. And, and so in this video, I'm going to break down really simply the steps that it will take for you to start landing bigger jobs, better paying jobs for your contracting business. And so how you can maybe, if you're struggling right now, charging what you're worth, or you're doing a lot of smaller jobs, the roadmap basically to getting to the point where you can start charging a lot more and landing much bigger jobs for your business. I think a lot of us know that most contractors struggle to be able to land bigger jobs. And so it's something that may be a problem for a lot of you. So first things first though, if you're watching this right now, I'd love to know where you're watching from. You can just comment like, Comment your city or where you're from in the comments below. I would appreciate that. Uh, always love to know like where you guys are from and where you're tuning in from. Um, but without further ado, we're going to jump into things here. Uh, in just a minute, I'm just waiting for some people to come in. But yeah, Chuck, where you are tuning in from below. Love to see where you guys are coming in from. And then, uh, yeah, we'll dive right into things here. I'll just check. Uh, let's check this. Cool. I think we're, I think we're good to go. Make sure this cool. So we'll dive into the five things here of how you can start attracting better jobs. And as I go through this too, um, throughout this video, just let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer them in real time. Cause I want to, uh, respect your time and really dive into things here and not take up a bunch of your time and just kind of rapid fire, give you the answers that you're looking for. Um, so first things first, how do you start attracting better jobs? The first thing, and like, this is kind of obvious, but You really got to look the part, right? And what I mean by this is this looks like several different things of how this can come together. But really what it comes down to is just committing to being a professional. Commit to professional. It's like committing to just being a professional. What does that look like? It looks like maybe that means having your trucks wrapped. Maybe that means having like a nice uniform that you show up to the estimate with, right? Like a nice polo uniform with the logo of your business. You've got a hat on maybe with the logo of your company and you've got a clipboard in your hand. You're smiling. You don't smell like cigarettes. Um, you know, you're groomed. You look presentable. Like this is sales, right? So you need to be presentable. Someone is going to be giving you money to be um, getting you to do something for them, right? So this is going to be building trust. So yeah, you want to just present yourself in a way that's going to make people want to actually work with you, right? Um, you don't want to be like doing too many F-bombs and swearing and stuff like this. Just be pro professional, presentable. You can still be you, but you're presenting yourself in a way that's going to make people comfortable working with you, right? This is number one. Like you cannot be approaching people and landing these bigger jobs if you are still operating as if this is just like a hobby for you, right? You need to approach this and, and really commit to being a professional, right? Really committing to being a professional, making people feel comfortable. So that's number one. So number two, and this is where you're going to have to hustle a little bit, but basically number two, what you need to do is you need to somehow document yourself doing high end work. So even if that's like, let's say that you do a job for like your family or something like your parents or your brother or sister or cousin, whatever, and it's a higher end job, even if you don't make much money on that job, your job at this point is you need to collect You need to collect what I call proof assets. So basically what you're doing in this stage is you need to land a higher end job. Um, you need to, maybe you work for a GC so that you're doing the work there so you can take a picture of it, right? Obviously you need to ask for permission for stuff like that, but you basically need to land somehow and show that you can actually do the work. Now this is kind of like, you know, the chicken comes before the egg or the egg before the chicken type deal. 
but this is where you need to be a little bit resourceful, but you need to basically get your hands on some kind of pictures and document you working on some higher end work, right? People need to see that you are capable of actually doing some high end work, right? So whatever it takes, you need to be able to collect a picture of some of the work that you've done that's higher end, right? So um, this looks like pictures, right? So the first thing is documenting like high end pics, right? Um, a really good tip, by the way, if you don't have like a way to take good pictures, you can hire a real estate photographer um, for like $100 to take pictures of your work because all they do all day is just take pictures of houses for real estate and like they have a system, they go super quick. So that's something you can do to just do it quick and dirty. They'll get it for you. So you need pictures of the work that's high end. And if you can, a testimonial as well. And guys, listen to this. When I first started our agency six years ago, I worked for free for an almost an entire year. And the reason I did that is because working for free or working for heavily discounted rate just so that you can get some of these pictures or like a testimonial or something when you're starting out, that is going to be worth so much for you. And I'm not saying that, oh, you need to discount and do all this stuff all the time. I'm saying that if you're just getting started, because this is all about the five steps to landing those bigger jobs, then you need to do whatever it takes to be able to get that bigger job. So even if that means, hey, I need to work for free to, to be able to do this job, or I need to discount my rate to get this job so that I can take those pictures, that's worth it, guys. Because that picture and that testimonial, you're not trying to make a huge amount of money off this one job. You're investing in the future so that when you have those testimonials for this job and those sick pictures of this high-end work, then you can go to someone else and say, check out all this work that we have and all these awesome pictures. We can do the exact same for you. And then you go in for the high quote, right? And I'll talk about that in just a second. But that's what you have to do first. So many people are trying to make the sale right up front but you don't have any proof. So why would someone work for you, with you, right? You need to be able to collect those. So if that means that you have to work for free or uh, charge like much less or whatever, dude, take the L for now. And then in the future, you're going to win. So that's exactly what you need to do. Simon says, I need to get on board with you, man. You're the answer to everyone, everything. Well, hey bro, I appreciate that a lot. Um, I'll shoot you a DM after, but um, that's super nice of you. Thank you. Um, so, collect proof assets. So really want to drive that home though, is taking pictures, testimonials. If you have to work for free to get that, do it. If you have to discount, do it. If you have to kiss ass or whatever you have to do, do it just so that you can get that portfolio that you need. Okay. Super, super important point. Not many people are willing to do this, but if you're willing to do it, like I mentioned, I worked for free for the first year of my career just so that I could get those testimonials and all the proof that I needed so I could come to someone and say, check this out, I can do this for you. So that's exactly what you can do as well. All right, moving on. Number three. So let's say that now at this point, you've got the testimonials, the pictures, they're looking great, super high-end work, you're looking the part, you've got your polo shirt, you've got your nice hat, your clipboard, you look on point, the next thing that you have to do is in your messaging, you have to start um, coming across in your messaging like a very high-end contractor. And I'll tell you right now, high-end contractors, stop talking about anything about price. That's supposed to say no price talk. So stop talking about anything about price in your messaging, right? So. If you want to come across as someone who does super high-end work, then in your marketing, in your messaging, on social media, remove all languaging that is talking about price. Simon says, have a clean car. Yeah, that's definitely looking the part, right? Um, so in your messaging, never talking about price. Always talk about the quality, reliability, um, your team, stuff like that. That is what is going to attract people who are willing to pay for higher-end jobs they don't care if you're a little bit cheaper. They actually want you to, to be a little bit more expensive. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but your messaging, 
you need to have some kind of specific offer. What I recommend is that you do some kind of extended warranty offer to really hammer home and, and uh, be able to provide measurable quality to the product that or the service that you provide. So many guys are saying like, hey, we have like the best quality. What, what are you putting in place to actually make that measurable, right? So if you say, hey, we have a lifetime warranty, then that is creating measurable quality that a homeowner can see and be like, yeah, like they have a lifetime warranty and this uh, contractor doesn't. So I guess this guy actually is better quality. So that is a way that you can create measurable quality that people will look at your marketing and be like, damn, they must be like better at what they do, right? So number three, messaging, super important. Stop talking about price, start focusing on your work. This is where testimonials, pictures, all that kind of stuff. If you can back it up, put your money where your mouth is with an awesome guarantee or something like that, that's great too. Um, so the next thing too, so that's number three. The next aspect is massive exposure. So the high end contractors, the guys who get the jobs, the guys that uh, homeowners want are the ones who have massive exposure. The ones who uh, have a social media presence, a really good online presence. You know, they have a bunch of reviews on Google. Just overall, they have as much exposure as possible. Why? Because this builds trust. When they see your face everywhere or your company logo or whatever all over online, instantly that builds trust with them because they're like, okay, if they're this exposed and nobody's coming out and saying like, hey, I got screwed over by this guy or whatever, naturally that is a level of proof that you are trustworthy when you're just like flying under the radar type thing. And if you don't have a website, you don't have any reviews, you don't have anything, then that makes homeowners really nervous because they're like, how do I know I don't just give this guy money and then he's gonna skip town and leave with my deposit and then I never hear from him again, right? Like there's a lot of scammy contractors who do that kind of thing. So having massive exposure is not only going to bring you more leads because people are just seeing you more, but it's also going to build trust and proof because people are like, well, I mean, I see him on social media all the time and I see people commenting and I see people saying nice things about him. So he must be good. So that is going to be a very powerful form of proof that is going to make you come across as a much higher end contractor. And you're going to be able to land those bigger jobs because of that. Um, and then this brings me to the last point. So I'm going to erase a little bit of this here. Hopefully you were taking notes. Um, so it doesn't matter. You can also just rewind this video. But the last point here, number five, is your price. So for your price, if you are, um, if you are trying to come in at the prices that you're currently charging to land bigger jobs, um, just because you're maybe like you're nervous or you're not used to charging bigger prices. I'm telling you right now that if you charge like a lower amount to someone who is expecting like a job well done and it's a bigger job, it's going to be a red flag for them. Um, this can actually work against you if you're charging less for a job and you're doing like a higher end job. I would recommend that you actually charge like above average because any homeowner who, if you, you know, it's like, it's the type of thing where it's like, Hey, you look like a duck, you quack like a duck, you know, he's a duck. And so what I mean by that is that if all of your videos and testimonials and pictures are super high end, your messaging comes across as really high end. Um, they meet with you, you come across super professional and like, you seem more like put together type thing. And then you deliver the final estimate and it's like a more expensive price they're going to be like, Hey, he's the real deal. Like we have all this proof here, all these images. He's super professional. Yeah. He's a little bit more expensive, but he's the best. So we're going to go with him. So that is something that's super important. And, uh, I'm telling you this from experience because earlier in my career, when I was, um, building like authority and building trust, um, I was still not charging very much money for what we do. Mostly because um, I just didn't have the confidence at the time, right? That's something that everyone might struggle with. But what happens is that when you charge like lower rates, then people can be confused by that because they're like, well, 
Like, why are you charging a lower amount if you really are that good, right? And so this is kind of like comes into a self-worth thing. It also comes into marketing and sales. Um, you need to eventually see the own value that you are providing. And so it's the type of thing where it's like, you have to convince yourself that you're worth it, that you can actually charge those prices. Because at the end of the day, guys, I'll be honest with you, like this is the hardest part about it, is that landing those bigger jobs requires you to be able to have a poker face sometimes and be like, yeah, this is what we're worth. This is what the job's going to be. And uh, this is what we're charging. So, you know, I know I could get this done for you. We can get it done right. So do you want to do it? Um, and that requires a level of confidence. But you know what else it requires? It requires you to have a solid lead generation system set up. And I'm not like going into a pitch here or anything like that. That's the last thing I want to do. But you need to have a solid lead generation system set up. Because if you only get like one big job come your way every month or two, then of course your mindset is going to be in scarcity mode, right? And you're not going to be able to quote high fees and have that kind of like, yeah, you know, if it, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, then it's all good. Like in life, you have to care, but not that much. And that's my advice to you is when it comes to sales, like you can do everything you, you can with marketing, like the stuff I just talked about. But if you want to land those bigger jobs, then you need to actually get paid, right? And so that requires like charging what you're worth. And that's a whole head game, right? And so this comes down to, in my opinion, having enough lead flow coming through of quality leads so that when you do get a big job, a big lead come in and you quote them with a price and it's like a little bit of a higher price, you're not going to like, you're not going to crap your pants and be scared and not be able to hold a poker face, right? Because you know, hey, if this one doesn't work out, we got more coming because we got a bunch of leads coming through. And this is what most contractors forget about is like, they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm booked up months in advance. You know, we have like a 90% closing rate. Well, dude, if you're booked not, not, uh, like months in advance and you have a 90% closing rate, what that tells me is that all of your um, business that you get are referrals and you're not charging enough because a 90% closing rate is unacceptable. Nobody has a 90% closing rate unless you're charging way too little and all of your leads are super, super warm leads. And that's an issue because you need to have some kind of lead generation system bringing in people who don't know who you are at all and so that you can constantly be nurturing them and have a full pipeline so that you can charge more and actually win some of these jobs. Kyle comes in and says... I feel like I haven't been charging enough with the economy and everything going up in price. I'm having a hard time pricing properly. Yeah, absolutely. And so what I would recommend for you, Kyle, is to listen. I don't know how long you've been watching this, but listen to the stuff that I talked about earlier in this video, because that's all the positioning stuff. I'm not going to talk to you about like how to quote properly and all that stuff, because that's outside of my um, focus, right? But what I can tell you is that most contractors are putting out estimates that are like higher and then they're like surprised when a homeowner doesn't work with them. But it's because you didn't do any of the foundational marketing work of coming across like better than what everyone else is, right? Like if you don't have any really good pictures of your work, no testimonials, you're not as professional, like you don't come across as being the real deal, then people are going to be like, oh, he's just taking us for a ride. Like, oh, this guy's charging more, right? Blah, blah, blah. So what I would recommend to you is watch the earlier stuff in this video, Kyle, and follow the steps that I talked about there. Because there's a lot of work that goes into charging more money and landing bigger jobs than just charging more money and landing bigger jobs. Like part of it is the poker face thing that I just talked about, but also the other aspect of it is like you really do need to make a case for yourself and show that you're the real deal. Simon says 25 to 30% profit take home. Yeah, I mean... Like we've got clients that go for 50%, right? So it, it all depends on like what your goals are. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. Um, Kyle says, I really appreciate your knowledge and sales. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, like half of this is just having the confidence and belief. Um, but the other half that's going to help you believe more is actually having the testimonials and really good pictures because then you're going to look at those things and then be like, yeah, you know what? I am the man. Like, we've done it. Like I, I'm seeing these pictures. Like I know that we, we can do this. And like, I know that these other contractors 
don't have this level of uh, skill. So therefore, I would actually be doing a disservice for this client if we don't work with them because then they're going to work with Joe Schmo and get scammed or he's going to charge them like a fraction of the price and then they're not going to get what they want. And I'm sure that you've experienced this before, right? It's like, it's the worst feeling ever. I've experienced this. It's the worst feeling ever where um, you give someone an estimate and then they're like, oh, that's kind of expensive. Like, I think we're going to work with this other business. And then you're like, okay, but like, do they actually know what they're doing? Because that quote that they're coming in at is concerningly low. And to get that quote, you know, like there's one guy, um, I don't know if you guys know Hammer and Grind, Brad, but he uh, he talked about how when people say like, oh, wow, that estimate's really, really high, then your response would be like, oh, like, um, like what did the other person quote, if you don't mind me asking? And then they say, oh, like he quoted like, you know, this much and it's like way lower. You could be like, oh, wow. Well, how do you think they get it that cheap? Right. So it's like a lot of the times these people who are undercutting you, like they aren't running a profitable business. They have no like idea of what it's going to take and cost to actually do this project. And that's how homeowners get scammed. So it's up to you to be able to communicate this stuff. Be a professional. Uh, Jay Abraham talks about the theory of preeminence and what this is, the theory of preeminence or the strategy of preeminence. Sorry. He talks about how it's your responsibility as a professional to be an advisor for your client in their entire well-being. And what that looks like is even if they decide not to work with you, it's kind of still your job to be like, listen, guys, even if you don't work with us, I strongly recommend that you don't do that deal because based off of what I'm seeing, that quote is way too low and there's no way that he's going to be able to provide you with this type of material, blah, 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 blah. Like I know this industry and I don't think that that, that is going to work out. You can show me the, the quote and we can break down the, uh, the itemized thing. Like I'll point you in the right direction. But honestly, like I would recommend if you don't work with me, like go here and do this or blah, blah, blah. So it's like, it's going beyond just you. You're really looking out for the client. And when people feel that, then they're going to be like, oh, damn, like this guy actually cares about me. He actually wants to help me, right? Like he's not just trying to make a quick buck. Like I think a lot of people are a little bit taken back when they come to us, like my team, and they message me and they say, hey, I'm looking for some marketing. And then we do a chat and then it's like sometimes it just doesn't seem like the right fit. Like maybe their business is in a, a different situation or maybe they only do commercial work, whatever. And it's like, it's not a good fit. Like I tell people, Hey, I don't think that it's a good fit for us right now, but here's a copy of my book or like, here's something I can help you out with. And people are taken back by that because they're like, wow, he's actually trying to help me and not just like make a quick buck. And so this is something that you should be practicing as well. But again, you can only get there if you have a solid lead generation strategy in place, because when you have a solid lead generation strategy in place, you're not like, oh, I just got this one lead. I need to make this sale right now. And like, this is no matter what. And like, the person is not a good fit whatsoever. The job doesn't make sense for you. But you're like, I just need to feed my family and feed my guys. Yeah, let's do it. It's like, dude, when you have a solid lead generation strategy in place, then you don't have to get all desperate and weird in sales. You can have that energy where you're like, yeah, man, that's cool. Like, no problem. Um, like we can work together if you want to or not. So what do you want to do? What do you think we should do from here? Like you, your energy is so much better. And that's kind of what this comes down to is like, it's an energetic thing. Like you, like I started this video talking about all these marketing things, but I'm kind of um, maybe going a little bit of a tangent about just the mindset too of sales that it takes. It's like, if you're not in that abundance mindset of like, oh yeah, I get a ton of leads. I get a ton of business then it's going to be really hard for you to charge what you're worth and land those bigger jobs because you're always kind of in scarcity mode and you're always like thinking, okay, like how do I find the next deal? How do I do this? Right. Um, Hey, for the people watching right now, I see some people watching, like, let me know where you're at. Like, where are you at in the world? Where are you watching from? I would love to know that I'm in Ottawa, Canada. It's really cold right now. Um, I'm sure there's some people watching right now. Most of you guys are in the States. Um, which I'm super jealous of. Um, but yeah, like, you know, if you want to land bigger jobs, it's a, it's a slow kind of progression, but you need to have the testimonials and the pictures. You need to be able to show, um, like what it is that you actually do, that you're worth a damn. 
You need to be able to be presentable. You need to be able to, like uh, Simon said, that you need to have a nice car, <laughs> that uh, sorry, like a, a clean car, that it's not like, you know, super dirty and ugly and full of Tim Hortons and all sorts of crap inside. So, you know, you gotta look the part and then you gotta quote, you gotta have the poker face, um, believe in yourself. You know, confidence comes from competence. That was what one of my mentors taught me a long time ago. Um, the more that you do something, right, a lot of contractors are really good at talking about what they do. Like, I'm sure if I did a phone call with any one of you guys, you could tell me all day long about like how to build a deck or like, you know, the right way to um, do roofing or any of these things, right? And so because you have that level of confidence that comes from your competence, you can leverage that in your sales where you are coming across very confident because you believe in yourself because you actually know your shit, right? And when you know your shit, it becomes a lot easier. Kyle says, I'm at a point in my business that I need a company truck, but at the same time, I'm nervous to take that step. Yeah, for sure. That's like one of those things where um, there's ways to like leverage it. Yeah, it's a really big investment. I mean, I don't know what your financial situation is, but you can, you know, you can finance it. Um, you know, you might be able to, like, I don't know, like your work situation, but you could even maybe like, borrow someone's truck, like rent a truck off of them, like certain days of the week or something like that. Like you might be able to get a little creative with it. The problem with that though, is that you won't be able to wrap it and like make it look super good because it's not fully yours. But yeah, that's the type of thing where it's like, you know, maybe you're rolling up to a job in like a car or something like that. Then, you know, in that case, maybe you want to park your car a little bit away and then walk up, right? Type thing. Um, right. It's like, that might be something you want to do. Um, but you know, really the main message is just, uh, Simon says, I'd rather take less and get what I want than do jobs. I don't get what I want to get paid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm assuming when you say and get what I want, I'm assuming what you say is like, do the type of jobs that you want to do. Um, yeah. And it's important to do the type of jobs that you want to do because then you're actually gonna be able to deliver on your promises and make people happy, right? It's like, when I first started my marketing agency, we were doing work for contractors, but we were also doing work for other businesses. And when you do work that's outside of your specialty or like with a different type of work, then it's a whole new learning process, right? Like you have to figure out different systems. There's always like a different learning curve. And so when you do like one thing really, really well, then that's scalable, right? So that was what I figured out early on is like, cool, why don't I just work with contractors because that's what I'm really good at and I understand it. Instead of like trying to figure out all these different businesses, like I'll just be a specialist here. And so for you guys, it's like, if you are specializing in floor refinishing, then just be the floor refinishing guy. Maybe you do a bit of installation, but like don't try and be like a bathroom remodeling guy and a kitchen remodeling guy. And then like you do all this other stuff, like, Keep it simple, you know, keep it really simple. I like this. If you guys have any other questions, keep asking away or keep making comments. Like this is, this is really cool. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like early on uh, in my career when I was doing sales, a lot of it is like, it's slow belief systems too, right? Like you land a job and then you're like, yo, I can't believe that we like landed this job. Okay, like this is another level for us. And then you, you knock it out of the park, obviously. That's really important. And then you ask them for a testimonial, you get some pictures and then you take it to another level. You get those testimonials and pictures and then you bring it to like, you know, you present it to another client and you're like, whoa, we landed this even bigger job. And you slowly but surely, obviously it's not like, you know, just completely linear. There's like, obviously slowly you're going to go down a bit and then go up. Um, but it's a process, right? And so getting the confidence to be able to quote those bigger jobs and land those bigger jobs is something that takes time. But as you go along in your journey, you're going to be able to capture those marketing assets like I talked about. Getting great testimonials, getting pictures, like get your whole online presence sorted because I'm telling you, it's going to make it a lot easier for you when you're pitching people because they're going to see like this guy's actually legit. Um, you know, it's like for, for anyone watching here, like if you Google Savant Marketing Agency or Matt Tebow, like you're going to see all of our client testimonials. You're going to see our reviews. You're going to see all that stuff. See that I have a book, right? You're going to see like all of this stuff. And it's like, 
that takes years to build up that kind of credibility. And so that builds a lot of trust with people. And so for you and your business, it's like, what are people seeing when they Google the name of your business? Like, I don't think a lot of contractors think about that. Like when people search your business, do they see like two star review and then like nothing else? Well, you know, it's not going to make them very confident in giving you a ton of money. You also have to like step away a little bit. I find from like step away out of your head of what you do and realize it from the homeowner's perspective. Damn dude. Like I'm giving this guy $40,000 to do this bathroom or whatever. Like, 40 grand is a lot of money, right? But for you, because you've been doing it so long as a contractor, you probably don't see it that way. Like you see it as like, yes, yeah, my work, like whatever. But you really need to understand like what it takes to be able to um, get to that point to invest in something, right? Like I'll tell you, for example, um, some of you contractors who are watching this, like if you aren't a homeowner and you aren't paying for renovations on your house, um, like I would ask some of your friends who actually are homeowners and they're paying for stuff on their house. Like it's pretty scary, right? It's a big, um, it's a big investment, right? So when I bought this house, like I'm a homeowner now. Um, and then I hired some contractors to work on my house, do my driveway, the roof, like all that stuff. Um, it, it can be scary because you're talking to like people and they don't necessarily always give you that reassurance you're looking for. And then I, I swear, like during the sales process, I literally would just get an email with like quotes and I don't hear from the person. It's like, that doesn't make me feel very confident that like, you know, my $10,000 or whatever it is, is going to go to like a safe place. Right? So having a little bit of empathy, having a little bit of compassion for people's situation and understanding that it's a big step. Right? And so I think that you know, you can only transfer to other people that which you have experienced yourself. And so if you haven't done any significant renovations to your house and like paid, not from yourself, but paid someone to do those for you, then you're at a disadvantage because you don't understand what it actually feels like to have that level of trust. And so this is another thing too, is like become the type of buyer that you would like to attract. I wrote a post about this. Um, if, uh, you know, I wrote a post about this a while ago where it was like, if you want to be able to make like $50,000 sales, right? Like $50,000 bathroom and land those types of jobs or whatever, then you need to be able to be at the point where you would be willing to invest $50,000. It's like, it's almost like an energetic thing. I'm not going to make this weird, but it's almost like an energetic thing where, um, like you aren't going to be weird about it because you have experienced it. It goes back to what I've talked about is you cannot transfer to other people that which you have not experienced yourself. So if you have experienced the feeling of what it feels like to invest that type of money into something, then it's a lot easier for you to get paid that type of money because you're not going to be all like weird about it energetically. You're not going to be all like scared and blah, blah. Like as soon as I started spending a ton of money, on coaching and all sorts of things, um, then I noticed that I started getting paid a lot more money as well. Kyle says, I can't afford half the things I build my customers. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Yeah, so it's like, dude, I promise you, and it's okay, but I promise you, once you start making more money and you get to a higher level in your business and you start investing in those things, it's going to bring your sales to another level because you're gonna understand like what you're doing at a much higher level too. Like it will be very different for you, you'll feel that. Um, you know, that's like marketers who don't do like any marketing themselves, like all of their business is just referral based. Like that's the same thing, right? It's like we do paid ads, we do all this stuff. So it's like when, when I'm doing it for clients, then I understand that feeling because we do it as well, right? So, um, it's the type of thing where it's like, you kind of need to experience it yourself and that will bring you to a higher level. Um, but that's a really good comment, man. Yeah. And it's like, it's okay that you're there right now. You know, it's like, I've got a, I got some buddies who are like realtors and they're, uh, selling homes and like, they're doing pretty well, but they don't have any homes. Like they can't afford a home. Right. So that in itself too, is like a little bit of uh, a difference, right? Like energetically, once you have your own home, you're going to be able to speak with a level of conviction that people are going to be like, whoa, that's crazy. 
But anyway, that's like, you know, there's not too much you could do about that right now, Kyle. But I would say um, early in this video, like after it's over, you can watch the stuff I talked about in marketing. Or what you could do is go to contractormarketingbook.com and I'll give you a free copy of this book, ebook and uh, the audio book. So if you go to contractormarketingbook.com, you can get that book for free, shameless plug, and you can learn all about marketing for your business. Read the first chapter. Read the first chapter. That's all about what I just talked about earlier. It's going to help you position yourself much better. So anyway, guys, a um, little bit of a rant at the end here, but it was fun. I had a good time just kind of chatting with you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to sign off. But uh, I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, I hope that in the new year, you're able to start getting the type of results that you want, land the type of jobs that you want. And hey, like if you're not getting the type of leads that you want, like let's say that these types of jobs, like the bigger jobs you're getting are very few and far between and you're ready to get to like another level and be able to start attracting those, shoot me a DM. Like let's have a chat. Let's see maybe in the new year what it would look like to be able to grow your contracting business and start attracting the type of jobs that you actually want. And we'll go from there and have a chat. Um, so I appreciate you guys. Uh, Kyle says, before signing off, can you repeat the website and the name of your book? Go to contractormarketingbook.com and you can get a free um, copy of my book. Exactly. And the book's called Digital Marketing Secrets for Contractors. All right, guys, signing off. Hope you have a good day and we'll talk again real soon. Bye.